Is it safe to use your charge verter and your generator outside to charge your batteries while you're pulling from them with your inverters? Stay tuned, we're gonna talk about that right now. Instead of a hypothetical scenario, let's go ahead and take a trip back about a month to when the Texas grid failed for about a million residents and we had to use this system for ourselves. A full day into no grid, but you wouldn't actually know it. You can see the lights out are on in the house. In the distance, you can hear generators rolling. Our neighbors are using their generators. Some crazy storms came through Dallas and then headed on east. Took out a ton of power. The county we're in, Smith, 100 and some odd thousand people, 30,000 without power most of the day. Last I looked about an hour ago, we had 25,000 still without power. So we have got about 65% battery life left throughout the day because we're not yet running fully on panels. But as we go into the evening, where we're typically going to be charging from the grid, and we have no grid, and I don't think it's gonna be coming on anytime soon, we're gonna go ahead and fire up the generator and the charge verter and get that going. We haven't done a whole lot of things today, just trying to conserve energy. Haven't done any laundry, taken a few showers. We're gonna go ahead and fire up the generator, charge the batteries, top them off to 100%, so we can cruise through the evening, stay nice and cool. Luckily, this storm has blown through and brought through a cool front, so it doesn't feel that bad out here. It's actually quite comfortable but inside homes, it can still get pretty toasty. So our system is powered by three 6,000 XP units by EG4. And then we have 30,000 watt hours of battery storage. And like I said, they're a little over 50% state of charge. The goal right now is to use the generator to charge these. They do have a generator port right here where I could feed directly into and then back feed to the batteries. However, the generator produces dirty power and I don't wanna fry these guys. So I'm gonna use the charge verter, which will take energy straight from the generator, clean it up, and then put out pure 48 volts to the batteries. These go in here and here and connect to these huge bus bars over here. And that is the safest way to charge the unit. So if you've seen some of the previous videos on the charge verter, you know I've got this plug right here that comes through the wall to right here. I'm gonna plug one end into this guy right here and then the other plugs into the wall. All right, generator's running outside, charge verter's in here. What we need to do is power it on. It'll take a minute, then it comes back on. Okay. Simply turning that switch on made this whole thing freak out and go into weird shutdown mode. I don't know. I'm gonna contact EG4 about that. What we are gonna do is now go ahead and plug this guy in. Look over here. Doesn't seem like it's getting any power. So now that I've flipped the breaker on, on the generator itself, you can see it's climbing up in current. Okay, so I forgot that I've got this thing basically pegged out 20 amps. So I wanna go to 100 amps because I wanna go ahead and charge this thing as quick as possible. So we're gonna click on this guy. I'm gonna click again and we're gonna go over to current. I'm gonna go down, 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 go to current. We're gonna hit enter. So we're gonna go up to 100, enter. Now it's gonna start over back over here at zero. It's gonna climb to 100. And it might be too much for this generator, but we'll, we'll see. All right, I went ahead and grabbed my clamp meter so we can see where we're at. 29 amps, jump over here, go to amps, DC. Clamp it on right here. 37 amps, 37 amps. In the original manual here, it says don't charge while you're utilizing the battery. Then they took it out, and then I contacted Signature Solar, and while I was on the phone with them, they contacted EG4 R&D, who told them that it is okay to actually do it. They've done enough testing to determine that this is okay. So that's what I'm doing. Man, I forgot how much I dislike generators. Like, I love the fact that I've got it here and I can back up in my batteries. I can make sure that everything is staying online because of it when I don't have enough solar generation. But 
Those things sure are noisy. Ooh, my ears are still ringing. It's probably still here in the background. One thing to keep in mind when you're sizing your generator is you want to make sure that you're taking into consideration, you know, the efficiency of it. And most generators are going to want to run between 50 and 75% of their total rated output. Doesn't mean that you can't max it out. It just means it's not going to be as efficient. It's going to be a dirtier energy going into your charge verter, which isn't going to be good for it. So for that 6,500 watt generator, I'm going to want to make sure that I'm keeping it probably at 4,500 in order to efficiently use the fuel and not overly burden the generator. So 100 amps is kind of the upper end of the, the range of that, the 100 amps of that 48 volt beat. So there's a ton of damage around us. East Texas got hammered. Dallas was just completely smashed. If you're in this area, let us know how you did. I'd love to, to hear in the comments down below. Hope you guys are doing well. Check out this video right here. It is a super simple solution to power when you don't have a full on system like I do. I've actually got it down at my grandmother's house running her oxygen machine right now. So the all powers are 2,500. It's a great little unit. Check it out.